The town of Delphi, Indiana was founded in 1828, and it has a population of approximately 3,000 people. It sits surrounded by scenic farms and woods, and it draws in visitors for recreation on a revitalized section of the historical Wabash and Erie Canal. And the Monon High Bridge Trail was developed to further solidify Delphi as a destination for people from miles around. It's a gem for your community. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the first 10 miles that were developed a few years ago, so many people were able to go out and enjoy them. And, you know, we started to become a destination for that. And people would come here to, to hike and bike. How has that changed for you after this crime? It was probably a good year before anybody requested trail maps from me again. And we used to have requests weekly. The Monon High Bridge Trail is now better known as the place where two innocent girls were killed in cold blood. And the picture of Bridge Guy cemented that notion in the minds of millions that saw the image as the story became highly publicized. This story hits home with every parent, every family, every 13, 14 year old kid. Hill, America. down the hill on that recording, they could have been led in this direction, down this hill. Down the hill, down the hill. Why was it muffled? Because I think she put it in her pocket. The murders of two young girls in a small Indiana town has become a national story. Drivers in nearly every state are now passing by billboards like the one you see here with a plea for justice for Libby German and Abby Williams. Brad Heath says a message from God brought him here to blow the shofar, signaling God is fighting for his people. The people of Delphi need the Lord to fight for us in this, in this time, this trying time. Sunset up on High Bridge Trail. I thought it was important to do. Chastity Gerald knew both Libby German and Abby Williams, the girls murdered not far from here. Libby was a good friend. She loved to swim. And she's like always nice and happy. still feel the tension with it. Before it was peaceful, it's not really peaceful anymore. Vincent brought his mother out to the bridge. They want to be involved to show their condolence. We ran into two other people who came to that bridge to pray. One of them, a man who drove 99 miles to get there. Going there gave them a whole new feel for the case. I was not comfortable that she went alone last night, um, and I personally just didn't feel comfortable riding there myself. Because I always thought, how, how did he get away with the things that he got away with? When you go out there, you know. I mean, you get that feeling. There is no one around. Obviously, the focus still remains on finding whoever did this, but today the community was talking about how to make these trails safer. The people who help run and use the 10 miles of trails around Delphi say there was always talk of improvements that could be made, like more cameras and better signage. Now, though, in the wake of the murders of Libby German and Abby Williams, who spent the last hours of their lives on the trails near the Monon High Bridge, those improvements seem all the more pressing. It's unfortunate that something like this had to happen in order to... Uh, highlight it and and uh, uh, look into this kind of improvement but you know here we are and you know I'm encouraged by this meeting. The Trail Safety Task Force met today to look at several suggestions for making the trail safer like cameras in parking lots to record the license plate numbers of vehicles that come and go. Some residents express concerns that people were parking at trail entrances after dark and had been for some time. Yeah. Among the options discussed passing a city law that would find people parked at trailheads after dark or creating a group of volunteers who could help police patrol the trails and report any trouble. The task force also talked about adding more cameras in the more remote areas of the trails. Talking about the changes and ultimately paying for and maintaining them, though, is something different. We're not going to try to extend ourselves, but like I said, you can't 
can't put a price on safety. And so we're going to do what's best for our community first and then worry about the funding afterwards. And I think they want to see our community take back the trails. And I think people are going to step up and make some donations. Still, finding the man in this picture is the main concern on everyone's mind. Until that happens, trail improvements can only go so far when it comes to easing people's fears for their safety. We will get to the bottom of this, and I'll, I'll say, I said it day one, and I'll say it till the end. And the conversation on trail safety is far from over. The task force is expected to meet next Monday night. The main topic expected to be discussed, how to pay for some of these improvements. A major announcement today about the future of the Delphi Trails five months after the deaths of two teenage girls. Today, the Delphi Trail Safety Task Force is releasing a video seeking donations to make safety and security improvements along its trails. If the city raises $50,000, it is eligible to receive a matching state grant for an extra $50,000. The money would allow the city to add a number of safety features, including lighting and closed circuit cameras. The improvements come after 14 year old Libby German and her friend, 13-year-old Abby Williams, were found dead near the trail on February 14th. Delphi has been a place that uh, has been unique. Our heritage tourism, our trails, Wabash and Erie Canal, historic downtown, all those things make up our community. And so when we're faced with the challenges of rewriting the history of our town, we want, we want the public to know that we are doing everything we can to get a state-of-the-art trail system to, to kind of set the precedence on trail safety in a community. People that come here wonder if, if our trail system is safe and, and, and that they're good to be on. And, and so the Trail Safety Task Force was put together by a group of individuals that wanted to bring back that sense of security for the trails. And I think we are to the point uh, that we can do that. And we're at a point where we're building the platform to provide that safety and security back to, back to our community. First and foremost, we want to get lighting. We want to light our entry and exit points up. We want our, our community to feel safe leaving the trails and entering the trails. Two is providing a closed circuit security system that will allow for our police departments, our sheriff's departments to effectively monitor, check, and, uh, and maintain the security of each of those entry points. Three would be the informational kiosks, and those we want to place in strategic locations to where when you're entering the trail you know exactly where you're going, where you can find exit points. Another option we've, we've looked at is public Wi-Fi for our parks. We want to make it to where you can come down to the park, come down to a trail access point, feel safe, and then also utilize an element of connectivity. The most important thing I think is uh, we're going to be putting trail markers throughout our trails every tenth of a mile. Each trail marker is going to be identified with a, uh, a GPS coordinates. That GPS coordinates will be then overlaid on the emergency 911 dispatch system so you're never remote and you're never alone. When we reach our fundraising goal of $50,000, IHCDA will match your contributions dollar for dollar. That's only if we reach the goal. Go to patronicity.com and make a tax-deductible contribution today. We need your help in making this project a reality. I've heard from a number of community members things like take back the trails. We don't want to be um, not using them and, and be too afraid and so forth. David McCain works on these trails. He says they're working on making this area safer for everyone. I honestly think they'll be healing with this and I uh, appreciate that. There are no surveillance cameras along the trails near that bridge. That could soon change. The deaths of Abby Williams and Libby German led people to evaluate the Delphi trails, which wind through the community of 3,000. Improvements will be among the teens' legacies. It's motivation for us. It's a, it's a constant reminder of, of what, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, we know as a community we have to come together and try to restore a sense of normalcy back. And uh, if this can be a one, one stepping stone, 
um, or, a, or a path to do that, then, then we've accomplished our goal. task force is holding a fundraising drive to improve the security along the trail where Abby and Libby were killed. The campaign launched earlier this month, the goal to raise $50,000 by August 30th. As of this afternoon, a little more than 11,000 had been raised. Delphi Trail Safety Task Force says it will use the money to install new lighting, cameras, informational kiosks, and public Wi-Fi. The Indiana Housing and Community Development says it will donate another $50,000 if the campaign reaches its goal. Murders of the two Delphi uh, daughters, Libby German and Abby Williams. And they say that out of every tragedy, there has to be some good that comes from it. And this might be that. Yeah, I, we, uh, we've kind of come together as a community. And so this is, we feel like, is the shining light. For the, for the community. A big announcement about a video coming out that's going to improve the safety and security features of trails in Delphi. Talk to us about what this video is hoping people will do. Well, we want to we want to show how the communities come together. It's something that um, that's unique. It's been it's been self-driven, so nobody's really tried to pull this along. It's really been an input of the community, and so the video really just highlights how we've come together, all the organizations um, throughout the community and beyond, and 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 just interested and concerned citizens uh, have helped kind of put all this together and so it's, it's really been a team effort. The uh, goal of this video is to help raise $50,000 for security improvements and uh, what happens after that $50,000 mark is reached? Well, we, we, we partnered with uh, the Indiana Housing and Community Development Authority, the IHCDA uh, State Department, and they, uh, they have a grant that if we raise $50,000, uh, they will match dollar for dollar that $50,000 in return. And so for us, it is a, it's a huge way to complement what we have in our community, reinforce safety and security. And so as a community, we decided to pursue that. $100,000 can go a long way to making things safer. What kinds of new features could we see on the trails? Well, we're really looking at just connecting everybody. We want to make sure that uh, that when you're on your trails, you you we we're looking at Wi-Fi. We want it, we want the kids to be connected. Um, we don't want you to be alone. Uh, we want you to feel like you're part of every trail system, even if you're in the rural, remote area. So, um, cameras, lighting. Um, public Wi-Fi, uh, all, all those trail access wow. points. The reward for the information is now up to more than $224,000 tonight after last night's pizza fundraiser. A new task force will also consider ideas to keep the walking trails near Delphi safer, including adding cameras, utilizing safety stations, and conducting patrols. Well, our early group uh, that was working through the uh, late 80s, 90s, and up into the 2000s uh, included about 40 people on the Delphi Historic Trails volunteer list. So these were people we could call on to do various things. We, we weren't, I can't say we weren't concerned about security, we just didn't deal with it because it wasn't the issue. Today the issue is, of course, security. Just we never saw this as a particular need, and maybe we were naive until something drastic like this happened. But it does seem logical now that we do something significant about it. Dan McCain is the president of the Wabash and Erie Canal Association. He's hoping upgrades like this restore at least some sense of safety and comfort. The kind of security we're talking about would give most people a feeling of some confidence of knowing more about the coming and going, especially at the end. They're not just adding lights, but they're also adding things like security cameras. It's all in an effort to make sure they stay safe. Three different locations. So, I mean, this is pretty much all I needed from here. A plan to make Delphi's trail system safer is now becoming a reality. We want to bring an element of protection back to the people that come to the trails. The city's trail task force was created after Libby German and Abby Williams murders more than six months ago. We all sat down and we realized that we weren't going to live in a circumstance anymore and we wanted to start living in a vision. And now that vision is becoming a reality. In early July, the group set out to raise $50,000 so they could be eligible for a matching state grant from the Indiana Housing and Community Development Authority. And today, the city says they surpassed that $50,000 goal and then some. We have a total of $176,258 for the Trail Task Force, um, and that includes the $50,000 matching grant that we're receiving today from IHCDA. Uh, just absolutely tremendous. Um, and so, thank you so much. And uh, without further ado, Mayor Evans.
there's really too many people to thank uh, for me to go through all of them here today. Um, this community, the city of Delphi, Carroll County, uh, and the state of Indiana as a whole uh, have been great supporters and great, great contributors um, to not only getting safety and more safe trails here in the city of Delphi uh, and around the county, um, but emotionally uh, and spiritually. Uh, we've seen the love and support uh, from across the state and across this nation. Uh, and I can't be prouder uh, to be a Hoosier, to live in Carroll County, and to reside in the city of Delphi. Uh, it's been an amazing experience to see good trump evil. Uh, and I thank all our partners here uh, today uh, and those that couldn't make it. I'm just thankful uh, that we can experience this good here today. Uh, give it back over to Director Adams here. got our first look at the place where the two girls were left. Police tape can keep the community from the scene of the crime, but nothing can stop people in Delphi from feeling it. Pastor Todd Ladd presides over the United Methodist Church. He helped organize a community walk, taking people on a half mile trip down the Monon High Bridge Trail. Libby and Abby were found near here a day after they left to take pictures of the scenery. says the greenery is the perfect backdrop to help the healing process. When nature goes through a forest fire, it recovers. So we've been through a damage and we want to make sure that we can recover as a community together. And we do that prayer in a lot of different ways. One of those ways will be through a physical cleansing using water from Deer Creek. It's an area where something terrible has happened. And so we want to make an act that says we're reclaiming this land for holy purposes. That can be walks, that can be a lot of different things, but the reality is it's time to reclaim this land. Well, first of all, um, welcome. I didn't really know what to expect when I stood on this trail just a little bit ago, over the course of the last 15 minutes, but um, huh. very uncomfortable feeling. A major trail project in Delphi is wrapping up. Phase three of the next level trail project is almost finished. The city of Delphi partnered with Indiana DNR using money from the next level trails grant. About a mile of trail was paved leading to the Monon High Bridge. The next steps are adding trail cameras, an info kiosk, lighting and signage. And that should be finished by November 3rd. Mayor Anita Whirling says the project is much more than an infrastructure update. 
Part of the thought behind doing this project is one, to honor the girls and, to, and their memory, and also to kind of reclaim um, the trail uh, for, for the community and for, uh, for good purpose and good feelings and happy memories. Work will continue on the Monon High Bridge next. The plan is to add decking and railing to allow people to view the scenery. unfortunate that something like this had to happen in order to uh, highlight it. Can't put a price on safety. I think they want to see our community take back the trails. It's motivation for us. It's a, it's a constant reminder of, of what, what we're doing and why we're doing it. We never uh, saw this as a particular need. Maybe we were naive until something drastic like this happened. Three different locations. So, I mean, this is pretty much all I needed. And I can't be prouder uh, to be a Hoosier, to live in Carroll County, and to reside in the city of Delphi. Uh, it's been an amazing experience to see good trump evil, uh, and I thank all our partners here uh, today uh, and those that couldn't make it. I'm just thankful uh, that we can experience this good here today. Uh, it, Carroll County, and specifically the De Delphi, is is that represented evil complete evil amongst humanity. Good prevails over evil, not the other way around, and we can't let that happen.